Ceramics by kscience.com. Physical properties of ceramics include being hard, brittle, which is when if there's a pot and it's been hit on the side, this means because it's brittle, the ceramic pot is easily cracked. Ceramics are poor conductors of heat and electricity. Ceramics have a high melting point. So let's say this is a ceramic mug and this ceramic mug is heated. The heat doesn't melt the ceramic mug because ceramics have high melting points. Ceramics are not chemically reactive. And because of this and the physical properties that we've already discussed, this means ceramics can be used as bricks, tiles, crockery, sinks, baths, and toilets. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. How are ceramics made? Well, ceramics are made from clay and water. So let's say we have a beaker containing clay. And in this clay, there are ionic compounds and covalent compounds. And in these ionic compounds, there will be aluminium and potassium metals present. And in the covalent compounds, there will be silicon and oxygen nonmetals present. The next stage of making ceramics is adding water to the clay. Water is mixed with the clay to make wet clay. So this wet clay can then be molded into specific shapes. And these specific shapes are placed inside a furnace where there is a lot of heat. So the wet clay which has been molded into specific shapes are heated to 1000 degrees Celsius where the heat causes the crystals to join together. The wet clay hardens because of the heat and the higher the temperature of the furnace, the harder the ceramics formed. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. We're now going to focus on how the giant structure of ceramics forms. Wet clay can be represented by this diagram because these represent the layers of ions and atoms arranged in the giant structure of the clay. In between the layers of clay are water molecules. So water molecules are found in between the layers of clay. So these are the water molecules found in between the layers. In the next stage, the wet clay is fired in a furnace where there is a lot of heat energy applied to the wet clay. When the wet clay is heated, we can see there are no longer water molecules in between the layers. This is because water is forced out from between the layers. And then strong bonds are formed between the layers in a giant structure. These lines represent strong bonds. And this is an orderly giant structure represented by this diagram. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. Why is it ceramics can easily crack with a small knock? This is what we're going to focus on next. Here I'm drawing the layers of clay in the ceramics and these lines represent the strong covalent bonds holding the layers together. These layers in the giant structure contain negatively and positively charged ions. So these red and blue circles represent the positive and negative ions in the layers. So if a ceramic is hit or not, for example with a hammer, like this vase is hit with a hammer, it easily cracks. Why is it the ceramic easily cracks with a spool knock? Well, if you look closely at this diagram, the layers are easily distorted with a knock. 
which causes the same charged ions in the layers to move closer together. They repel each other, causing the ceramic to easily crack. So the layers are easily distorted. The same charged ions move closer together and these ions repel each other, so the ceramic easily cracks. Pause the video here to practice the keywords. The answers will follow. Press pause to answer the questions. The answers will follow. If stuck, just rewatch the video. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. And don't forget to visit kscience.com for more videos, worksheets and quizzes at kscience.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe.